What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Lumion video for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the new features contained inside of Lumion 10.3, including the new custom displacement map feature. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I will link to this page in the notes down below. This is the release notes page where they talk about all the different things that they changed inside of Lumion 10.3. And so they've released a number of different things contained inside of this. The one I wanna focus on is definitely the custom displacement mapping feature. But I figured I'd just go ahead and go through this file and kind of talk you through some of the other things that got added as well. So number one, they've added a live sync for AutoCAD. So if you've been working in AutoCAD, there's now an extension that you can use in order to use live sync with your models. So if you're an AutoCAD user, I would imagine this is probably something that's pretty exciting for you. Um, feature number two, and the one I really want to focus on, is the custom displacement maps. So if you remember, in the last version, displacement mapping was rolled out for um, for materials that were inside of the library. However, now they've added a new box in here for displacement mapping. So let's say, for example, that I was to fly into the example model here. So we're just going to fly in and let's go ahead and let's add a rock material to the parking area right here. This is one of the example models. But if we wanted to edit this material, we could come in here. Now we could click. We're just going to add a new material real quick. And so far, the process is pretty much the same. I'm going to use a Megascans asset for this one. It's going to be a gravel. And we're going to add the albedo map in here for the texture. We're going to turn the reflectivity and the gloss down. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring the size of my material up a little bit just so this is a little bit more pronounced. But remember before, you still have the option to load in your normal map. So for my normal map, that would be for my gravel road. We'd add normal right here. And notice how this gives you some really good recesses for your gravel, right? You could adjust your relief in here, but it really kind of, um, it, it kind of faked the 3D look that's in here. Notice how you kind of get shadows off of them now. And so notice how in here I can click and add my displacement map. And we're gonna go find the one for my gravel. We're gonna add displacement right here. Well now, if you look at this, um, and you drag the displacement up and down. If you drag it all the way to the left, you can see how this looks really flat. But when you drag this to the right, notice how this gets really pronounced and all of a sudden this looks like an actual surface um, with actual gravel in here, as opposed to what it looked like before. So the displacement function actually makes things look a lot more 3D and a lot more rough. And notice how this adjusts as I adjust my map scale. So if I make it smaller, it'll get smaller. If I make it bigger, this will adjust with that. So this is probably one of the easier implementations of displacement mapping that I've seen in a rendering program. And so let's say, for example, that I was to place something like this on the side of my building as well. So I can go to my material library, I can add a new material, and let's say we wanted to add some kind of a stone wall. So we'll go with this stone wall right here, something with some really good recesses. It maybe won't fit as well on this building, but we'll go ahead and use it for now. So we're going to add this on here, we'll turn our gloss down, we don't really want it to be reflective, and then we'll add in our normal map. So if we load in our normal map, and adjust our relief, you can see how you definitely get better shadows. So then we can kind of zoom in in order to get a look at this effect, but now if we add our displacement map, and we'll make sure that we're doing this for our stone wall right here, but if we load in that displacement effect, and then adjust that, you can see how you can get some really great recesses for things like the uh, the material in between your stones and other things like that. This just looks a lot more realistic than it did previously without the displacement. So notice how you're really getting that pronounced effect by adding those displacement maps in here. So in addition, they've also adjusted their high quality preview so that the hyper lighting is shown in there. So your high quality preview is going to look better. So that's just something where when you click in here in order to load your high quality preview, that'll now show up. Um, they've added support for SketchUp 2020 files. So you don't have to down save your SketchUp files to uh, you don't have to down save your SketchUp files to the older version anymore. So they've also added a button in here where you can add automatic reflection planes. So if we were to, for example, go into our photo mode and let's go down into our reflection feature 
And then when you click on Edit Reflection Planes, there's now a button in here that'll automatically detect those reflective surfaces. You can see how that added these planes in here. So it saw, for example, that these are made of glass, and it added reflection planes on these faces. So this will add these in here automatically now, instead of you having to go find them um, go track them down and find them. I will note that the more reflection planes that are in here, the um, the slower your renders are going to be. So you may want to go in here and manually just double check and make sure that the planes that you have in here are the ones that you want. So you can adjust those just by mousing over these like this. And if you want to get rid of one, like this one, you can just click on it. But now you can automatically add those reflection planes. They've also added some fine control stuff to the timeline slider in movie mode. So if you hold the shift key, you can now fine tune that position. So there's some other changes in here as well. So they're really just navigation and UI things, but they will make your life a little bit easier. So in addition, they've also added a preview mode to your materials. So it doesn't feel like a lot, but when you're looking at your material library over here, you can see how now when you mouse over this, you get a larger preview than you did before. So you can really mouse over these and see what your materials are going to look like as well. There's also a number of different fixed errors that are in here. So you can read through this list as well. Um, probably the biggest thing I'm excited about in this release though is the custom displacement mapping. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Are you excited about this new release? Have you tried out the custom displacement mapping? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.